Good morning. Welcome to Fibertown. Alice and I would like to welcome you. This is episode 69, dude. And it is May. No, it's not May. It's June 4th, 2014. So this is my penultimate episode before I jet off to the continent, as it were. And uh, yeah, it is morning about 10 o'clock here in my living room. And... We're just chilling, everybody. We have quite a show for you today. There she is. Thanks for all the kind words about Alice's appearance last week. I'm really liking recording on the couch here, um, now that I've rearranged everything, um, so that Alice can be my co-host more often than not. All right, so we have quite a bit to do. I have introductions. I have the May FO thread winner. I have the Autism Awareness Craft Along Winners. That's a long list. Um, I have one FO, I have several whips, um, some spinning acquisitions, and Ask Fibertown. So, without further ado, let's talk about who joined the group and introduce themselves in the thread. So we have Sue Bar 60, who is from Massachusetts. Hi, Sue. She is looking for new sock heel construction, so, you know, I'm kind of a one-trick pony with my sock heels. I like the bottom of the heel gusset, but I am trying the fish lips kiss heel, and I have been known to do an afterthought heel or two, but I do not like them. Um, personal preference, your mileage may vary. We also have, okay, Inga K. Yar, who's from Denmark. I'm sorry if I said that really badly. I have friends from Denmark, but I speak nothing. Um, Denmarkish. Is the front page of Ravelry about Denmark today? Hang on a sec. No, sorry, it's about the Netherlands. My fault. Um, okay, so we also have hot pink socks. Oh, Inga from Denmark has just started watching, so I wanted to say thank you. I'm really glad you're watching and enjoying, and thanks for saying hi. We also have hot pink socks. Oh, and I forgot to write down her first name. She's from Kentucky, and she has a blog where, okay, let's see. She has a blog where she reviews knitting products, I guess. Her name is Stephanie. She reviews things related to knitting. I'm not exactly sure, but go ahead and check it out. It's hotpinksocksreviews.blogspot.com, which is very cool. So thanks for joining and telling us. And then we also have Trista23, who is from Washington State in the US. She is a knitter spinner. She has a ladybug, yay. And she also has some schnauzers. Um, and enjoys taking them to the dog park, which sounds delightful. Alice likes the dog park. She likes to go walkies and go to the dog park. Yes, yeah, she does. Can I get a kiss? No, she's like, put my leash on. All right, so what else? Okay, the May FO winner was Fisher Road, who just finished her very first socks. She says they're a hot mess, but I disagree. I think they're beautiful. So Fisher Road, contact me, and um, we'll talk about what pattern you'd like to get. Um, can be $7 or less, giftable on RAV. If you are sole stitches, by the way, you haven't contacted me yet. You won something a few weeks ago. Sole stitches, PM me. I'm leaving the country soon. <laughs> I'd like to get your prize to you. Uh, what's funny is that I'm going to the country where she lives. So I don't know, it'd be better to mail it here or there. All right, so let's talk about autism awareness um, and the winners for that craft along. Thank you, thank you for crafting along and just being part of that raising awareness. Um, you know, the pen hook and needles ladies um, put that contest, contest, put the craft along together and I wanna thank them for inviting me to be a part of it. It's been lovely. And I have really enjoyed listening to um, things they've shared about living um, with autism via their sister slash daughter who has autism. And it's a rare sort of, um, for me at least, a rare uh, insight into that. And I really do appreciate their, their um, invitation and letting me participate. And I also want to say congratulations to um, Talia. She, I believe, has gotten engaged, so that's excellent. Um, okay, without further ado, uh, let's talk about the prizes. Although, 
<laughs> you can still participate. Hang on, I can move my knitting. You can still participate in the craft along in their group as well as in the equal opportunity crafters group. And that's those craft alongs are going till the end of June. But we are done. Do you want to see the prizes and see who won? All right, we have lots. So I drew, drew it all ahead of time so we wouldn't I wouldn't be fumbling between the random number generator, yada yada yada. But these are the numbers and we have 10. So, let's see. The person who won an $8 or less giftable pattern on RAV from the ladies of the Penhook and Needles podcast is Julie, no jewels, jukes. So I will give them your name and you guys can talk about what pattern you'd like. Congratulations. All right, so we have three patterns and thank you for that gift, ladies. Um, we have three patterns from Kimberlolly um, and her patterns are amazing. Um, Kimberlolly, you can choose from amongst her published patterns you will not be disappointed. You will have a hard time choosing. So let's see. Those winners are Rose Bob, Twinny Mama, and Sue Bar 60. Sue Bar 60, you just joined the group and you're a winner. So I will give Kimber Lally, and she has the Giving Flower podcast. I will give her your names and you guys can talk about which ones you'd like. Okay. The winner of the beautiful Seashore Sharon bag. I am jealous of you. Um, is, okay, what did I write down here? Marsh, Marsha TF? Marsha TF, you won the Seashore Sharon bag. Um, hello. This is a rare and special prize. Congratulations. PM me your address. I will mail it to you. Do it soon so I can get to the post office. Otherwise, you won't get it till August. Um, okay. Also, jealous of you, person who won this uh, striped rainbow from the color wheel, tough sock, striping, self-striping yarn. It is a six striper, Roy G. Biv. From the color wheel, Amanda, on Etsy, the color wheel, to, um, the color wheel yarn on Etsy. Stinking amazing. It's a uh, 8020 Superwash BFL nylon. I love this. Um, 400 yards. Evil Twin 2. You are the winner of this. Congratulations. Jealous. Um, let's see. The winner of the Knit Picks Chroma kit. You could do color work. You could do whatever you want. Um, look up those faux aisle hats. There's some free ones out there. I've made one and it's really fun with color changing yarn like this. Um, and this was generously donated by a lovely viewer from Texas. Thank you so much. Um, the winner of this kit is KKS Pack. Congratulations. PM me with your address. I will mail it to you. Okay, the Highland Handmade, also generously donated by that Texan viewer. Several of these things are. The Highland Handmaids, Kennebec Colorway in the Silver Maple, Silver Maple Sock Yarn. Merino bamboo nylon, look at that. Ugh, I have this on fiber. The winner of that is Jay Banducci. Hi! She sent me those amazing Boston Terrier, um, oh, Boston Terrier, um, sock blockers. Here, let's see my Boston Terrier. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm bothering you. She was just settling down for a nice nap. All right, so Jay Banducci, PM me, address, I'll send it, okay? All right. Oh, the little teapot. I'm wearing my little teapot stuff as a, as a bracelet today. Look at that. I love, love, love these. This is one of the, I don't wear a lot of jewelry. This is coming to Spain with me. Oh, I love it. You get these three, and I will make sure they look nicer. One, two, and three. These will, will go across the Atlantic Ocean along with a lotion bar to Java Pearl, who is CC from the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. And these, you can connect them, wear them however you like. And these are from Anne, generously donated by Anne of A Little Teapot. And her shop is A Little Teapot Designs love these things. All right, so congratulations, CC. That is a very unique thing. 
going to love the lotion bar smells. It's lovely. I've been putting it on my feet. Um, we have one last giveaway. It is Western Sky Knits. 100% mulberry silk, 4 ounces in the night pool colorway. Look at that. Look at that. You know who's getting this? Apple 380. You're getting this. Your post was lovely hand spun. So congratulations. PM me your address. I will get that to you. That's the end. Pickle juice. Oh my goodness. Excellent. So please PM me if you want your stuff in a timely manner, i.e. before August. Let me know. Let me know your address. I will make a post office run. Okay. I have one FO. It is a hat. It is out of hand spun. I do not remember the name of the hand spun, but look at this. How fun is that? Remember when I spun this? This came, I bought this at Madison Wool in Madison, Connecticut. Let me see if I can wear it without messing up my beautiful hair. Love it. It's for my husband, but you know how that goes, how I might, you know, I might have to purloin it occasionally. Um, <laughs> I, I love this hat. All right, so it is the wool was from Madison Wool in Madison, Connecticut when I went there last summer. That was a great yarn store, really good yarn store. Um, I wish it were my local yarn store. So I don't even remember the fiber content. I think the dyer was something with monkeys in it. Spin monkeys, spun monkeys. It came in many, many braids of fiber. So I combined them in the order that I like them. I chain plied them and it's bulky. I cast on 70 stitches and yeah, made it up as I went along. Not really thrilled with that where the high contrast ribbing, where the pearl stitches popped out, but eh, the dude won't care. The dude abides. So that is my hat, that's my one FO. I have this, my gourmet stash box of chocolates hand spun. That is gonna be my next and final hat for Father's Day. So there'll be three Father's Day hats. One might actually go to my father, we'll see. All right, so works in progress. I started a new one. The honey cowl, and I started it, this is my first honey cowl. I'm knitting it out of my hand spun again. And let me show you, this is the fiber optic mer uh, merino silk. Um, I am enjoying this so very much. So, so, so very much. This is an incredibly zen knit. And what's kind of solidified my decision to cast this on was I was listening to a new podcast. Is it called the Bakery Bear podcast? I only watched one episode. I think they only had one. Maybe they have two now. Anyway, it's a husband-wife podcast out of the UK. And the husband knits, and he was saying, oh, the honey cowl, that's my favorite thing to knit. I was like, okay. I had talked about casting it on, and I'm going to do it. So... The Honey Cowl is a free pattern. It's by um, put out by Madeline Tosh. <clears throat> and look at all those stitches, just fell right off the needle. Um, there are a lot of slip stitches, but it, what's curious about this fabric is slip stitches tend to snug stuff up, they tighten stuff up. But this fabric, look at that, sorry. This fabric is very stretchy. Um, what I'm finding, is that I started spinning with this midnight blue and typically here's how I go on my spinning wheel. At the beginning of the spin, uh-oh, my startup, oh, I might have trouble with this podcast. At the beginning of the spin, I tend to spin thinly. And then at the end, I go fat. Uh, Cause I'm just impatient to be done. And why can't I keep the stitches on the needles? So I'm going up, I started up, I started with a needle size six and now I'm up to an eight because I'm getting towards the end of the spin and my yarn is fatter. But thunder to lightning gradient, so there's the thunder, moving through all of these colors. There's the lightning. Now, highly recommend. Great for hand spun. My second work in progress is 
my heliotropic pullover. Mark. <clears throat> Is this still recording? Okay. It stopped for a minute. Isn't it, isn't it nice having a ancient laptop? It's me again. I do believe I was talking about my heliotropic pullover by Mercedes Tarasovich Clark. Um, I've made some progress. I've finished the yoke. I have separated for the sleeves. I have some doubts. Here it is. Um, I'm knitting a combination of the smallest and second to smallest sizes. I could be hallucinating. I don't know. But all of the projects on RAV had a complaint about the neckline and they said it was just falling off the shoulders and they had to snug it up somehow either with a drawstring or like crocheting it a little bit to tighten it up. So I of course am always smarter than the pattern and you know how that works out. Um, I probably should have chosen a larger size. The big problem so far is that this neckline sits is now sitting up way too high. I decided to knit the to knit this part, the half inch of ribbing right here, on a very smaller needle, a size five. I'm currently knitting on a size seven. I've actually gone like size five, size six, size seven. I think now actually I'm on an eight. Is that right? Yes. Um, it's a US 8 that is a 5 millimeter. So what's happened is that this sits up high on my collarbone, this part right here, and it does not lay flat. I have steamed it um, and it lays a bit flatter, but essentially it's acting like a funnel neck. It's standing up. I don't know if that's going to work for me. I don't know. I also don't know if these armholes are going to be wide enough. They look wide enough, but they, uh, I think that the neckline is pulling it up somehow. Um, and this just might, I don't know. It took me so long to knit this yoke with all of these slip stitches and little cable -y things. It's like a very simple cable. I really don't want to pull it out. Um, and the other thing is, it's a linen silk rayon blend, so I don't knit with anything other than wool usually, so I'm not sure how it's going to behave. It could really pull down, right? Cotton tends to stretch vertically. I'm just, it's just stockinette from here on out. And I don't think I'd want to reuse the yarn for anything. It's, it's very loosely plied and I don't think it would survive a, a, a frogging very well. It's got that slubby texture. It's pretty. I'm just looking for a way to fix the neckline problem. I don't know. I'm going to keep trying it on. What I do is I knit with two needles and then when I have both needles in there I can just put it over my head. Um, I went to the movies last night. I saw a Divergent. Not a fan. It only cost me two dollars. It was two dollar Tuesday. So I got probably two inches of stockinette done, and I really like the stockinette fabric. I don't know, maybe there's some sort of crazy surgery I can do. Maybe I could cut. Maybe I could pick up stitches and then cut and then crochet or something or knit up. I don't know. I think I'm going to keep going. Um, this, as I said, the slip stitch is here and there's a little mini cable kind of effect. Um, there's, I don't even know what you'd call that. It's, it's a twisting, it's not twisting a stitch. It's, yeah, it's a two stitch cable and a slip on some rows and a slip on another. So it really does make this nice pattern, but it, it tightens things up quite a lot. I'm going to keep knitting it. And it's out of um, Taki Sierra, which as I said is a linen cotton rayon blend. So I really like the fabric in the stockinette. So I, I'm going to have to do something creative with this neckline. 
doesn't have a lot of give and it's it sits up like a funnel like a tiny little funnel just a half inch or so but it's not like it's supposed to be which is okay but it doesn't quite look right so if you have any brilliant ideas do let me know <clears throat> so that is the heliotropic uh, pullover and that is from an interweave knits I cannot remember it's one of the summer ones and that's in my Jan Smiley bag over here which I love and I used as a purse last night at the movies okay so <clears throat> what else all right spinning I buckled down and finished processing Burkett's fleece. This is my Finn sheep. Um, she was six or seven years old. Hey, girly. Um, beautiful, snowy white, shiny, silky Finn fleece that I got from Finnegan's Flock, which is a shepherd in Pennsylvania. Um, it, she was about two and a half pounds. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I have combed about 10 ounces. So I have 10 ounces out of two and a half pounds of combed fiber. This is, some of it's already in singles form. Huh? <laughs> this is some of the rest of it. So I need to spin all this. I would kind of like to take it with me to Spain. It's a lot of spinning. Um, <clears throat> I do have quite a lot more of waste from the combs. This is the waste from the combs. So the neppy bits, the shorter pieces of um, staple, not short, uh, not second cuts, but just shorter staples that the comb did not like. Combs are generally better for longer staples. So this can be drum carded. So I'm thinking of doing that. I actually did a little test um, just to show you a difference from the, here is some of the car, um, the combed fleece. As, and there is one little nap I'll just pick out as I spin. Um, this is the combed fleece as opposed to the carded, the, the comb waist. <sighs> so I made a little bat out of the comb waist, <clears throat> out of some of it, just to see. And it will get a, it'll give a very different yarn, a textured yarn. But I could do something with that, depending on what I decide to knit. If, I don't know, maybe this could be cuffs and button bands, but I don't think this is going to be a sweater. I just don't think there's going to be enough. I did some sampling. Um, I spun a two ply and a three ply, just a few yards of each. And then I swatched. So this bottom, it's a very denim -y colorway and this could still be over dyed, I think. I'm not loving, loving, loving the color, but here is this, the two ply right there. There we go. And then this down here, I didn't have enough to bind off so I just ran, uh, ran the string through the live stitches. That one is the three ply. It's got quite a bit of a halo, and I think I really prefer the two-ply. It's, and you get more of a risk of pilling with the two-ply, but there's already a crazy halo on this, so that's not really a concern for me. And it's just lighter. It's a lighter weight. I think I'm going to like it more. The two-ply could be a viajanche. It really could. So, we'll see. I'd like to get it all spun and plied before I go. <laughs> Is that crazy? Ten days? Nah. Nah. So there's my swatchy swatch of Bruchetta. Now, if I want to over dye it, I would dye them in the skeins. Um, we'll see. It's on my wheel right now. So I'm doing some more plying today, and then I'll spin the rest of this mass of stuff. Now the way I'm moving the fiber, I showed this on Instagram and some people were like, whoa, this is, I did not invent this trick, but I have these weaving bobbins, storage bobbins, and what I've been doing is writing, this one doesn't have, I've been writing numbers with a sharpie on there, one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, and for example, I'll take 
bobbins one and four and ply them together um hoping for you know general consistency like you know because they were spun at different times um i'll take the first and the last singles that i spun and ply those together um because your your consistency does vary from time to time when you're spinning even if you use the same settings on your wheel so this is my drill and i found a drill bit that fit more or less this hole and i put some tape on it and that just gives a little bit of grab for the bobbin. I tie my single on there, um, and the single's still on the wheel flyer, and I just, it's a bobbin winder. I wind it on, it's super fun. Highly recommend this little trick. Um, if you had a toilet paper roll or something else, I mean, that obviously wouldn't fit on a drill bit, but you could maybe rig something up. You're smart. You're clever. Um, <clears throat> so that's how I've been winding my bobbins, and I do them in one ounce, um, one ounce portions. Learned all of this more or less from the Knitmore Girls. They are a wealth of information on spinning and knitting and fashion. I just listened to them. They're all about the fashion this week. Oof, let me fix this. <clears throat> okay. So that's Burketta. She's going to get spun and plied. And then I only have three more fleeces to process. Yeah, I wish I wish I had more done. I'm gonna miss those fleeces this summer. I don't know which one. I think the Jacob is gonna be next. Yes, the Jacob. All right, so that'll be for August. Acquisitions. I really shouldn't have, but I did. I had some funds in my PayPal, and I was kind of peeved that I didn't get one of the newer loop bullseye bumps at Maryland Sheep and Wool the, with the shorter color repeats, because I think that would be fun. So I got this one on an update. This is Potpourri. It's 100% merino. It's five ounces. It's mauves and browns and pumpkins potpourri so um Kristen of the skein podcast and she's a dyer of skein yarns she makes beautiful yarns she's knitting a um a feather and fan comfort shawl and i love how she's doing it she's doing it out of one of her gradients i don't know if these color repeats would be long enough but i would love to do that kind of shawl looks so relaxing to knit. I love to do feather and fan. Um, so that's kind of what I have in mind for this. And I got a little sample of Spontaneous Spinning Cloud with some sparkle from Steph. She sends a little sample, look at that. That is so my color and it has silver sparkle in it. So that's my acquisition this week. I have something else coming. It should arrive tomorrow. I'm very excited about it. I wish it were here now. All right, so let's ask Fibertown, shall we? Let's do that. Um, I'd like to answer one or two questions. Okay, let's see. Are you guys entering, some of you are entering your FOs in the summer of S. I've put up a thread in our group, and the Summer of S is a craft along where you can enter anything that starts with an S. If you can make a case for it starting with an S, you can enter it. For example, if you usually sew project bags, well, let's think about that on two levels. It's sewing, and it's a sack, because the synonym for bag is sack, right? See what I did there? So it's really up to you. and. Not only FOs work here, but chatter and encouragement and compliments will also be eligible for prizes. So go crazy, folks. Okay, Ask Fibertown. And that is a craft along that's going all summer. August 31st, it'll be over. Okay, so Liner Knits asks, when, do you, when you do a bottom-up sweater in the round and you graph the armhole stitches together, how do you go about closing the inevitable holes at either side of the grafted stitches? I always end up winging it half the time. It works fine half the time, half the time not so much. 
I'm hoping you have some sort of super secret method. Okay, I do have a method. It's not super secret. In fact, I found a blog post of from Shay Lizzie that has it in pictures. And I will link to Shay Lizzie. She's on Blogspot. So she has it visually, which is really nice. So here's what your armhole stitches look like. Correct? Yep, they're on the waist yarn. You're about to put them on needles and kitchener them closed. There they are. There they're on the needles. So when you kitchener, you have equal amounts of stitches on either needle. So here's what she does. She picks up one stitch around here and then one stitch around here. And I suppose you could pick up even more than that. See? She spells it all out. She's picking up an extra stitch. She's picking up an extra stitch. So she talks about how to make sure they're oriented in the correct way. And then she kitcheners. So she adds, there she goes, she's kitchenering. So she adds a few extra stitches from either side. And then you end up with a nice little armpit with no gaps. So I didn't make this up, but this has worked for me before. And um, yeah, that's one way to do it. There could be others, but I think that's a pretty good one. Um, in, in the past, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've ended up just sort of sewing them together and, you know, trying to close those holes. Um, and that's not a big deal. You know, it's your armpit. If you're raising your hand in class, people are going to see the holes. But if you're not in class, then you're probably good to go. But if you like to do things neat and tidy, there's a good way. Okay, um, so thanks for that question very much, and I hope that helps. All right, the other question I'm gonna answer today is from Kem McKee. Hi, I met her at Uniquities. I believe, was it Kelly? Yeah, Kelly, I think you're the, yeah. And her question is this, I'm thinking about getting my first spinning wheel. What kind of wheel would you recommend for someone just starting out who does not have a lot of space? Is there a store in Northern Virginia where I can try one out? Thanks, Kelly in Haymarket, Virginia. So, Kelly, remember Uniquities? Upstairs, that's in Vienna, Virginia, and they're the ones that put on the Fiber Farmer's Market, and there's one this summer. I'm kind of bummed I'm going to miss it. Um, they have an upstairs classroom slash spinning loft. It is, and she, Caroline is the lady who runs the spinning side of things at Uniquities. She is fabulous. Um, very generous with her knowledge and time, and she is incredibly knowledgeable. I, I really, uh, she's a valuable asset um, and a really nice person. I don't know if you can rent spinning wheels from them, but you can definitely try them. And they do carry shocked, uh, maybe Maja Craft. I, I, I don't remember. I'm kind of shocked centric. <laughs> and I have a ladybug. She weighs 12, 13 pounds. She does not take up a lot of space. So I think those are called castle wheels that stand up straight like that. Um, as opposed to maybe a Saxony, which is more like the Ashford traditional. I believe that I'm describing these correctly. I could be wrong. But uh, my, my ladybug's footprint is very small and She's well priced, um, and she does everything I want her to do, and I she feels right traveling. So I would go and try a bunch of different wheels. Caroline will help you, um, and do buy through them because we need resources like that. Local stores, um, supporting your local store is really important. So. Um, if you are super duper, um, you know, cramped and budget is not a, not a concern, everyone raves about the Hanson mini spinner and that's just a little box basically. It's electric or you can use a battery pack, I believe. Um, but that might be another way to go. I don't think that Uniquities has those, but I would definitely use Uniquities as a resource and you know, wherever you are, if you have a store like that, try to support them because 
you don't want them to go away. So that would be my recommendation. Go and try as many wheels as you can. Um, they have spinners, um, open houses where, oh my gosh, um, a huge variety of different wheels. And you could try, there's a lady with a Sharka. Um, you could perhaps take a look at what other people have and ask if you could try it out. So um, that would be my recommendation. Good luck, it's very exciting. Let me know what you end up getting. Oh my gosh, Alice has been a lump today. We're going to say goodbye. Hey, Al. Wakey, wakey. There she is. There's my girl. She had a birthday. She turned two on Monday. She had a plate of kibble, bananas, grass clippings, and raspberries. She loved it. Yep, she's two years old. She's in the terrible twos. All right, folks. If you're a winner, you're all winners. But you know what I mean. If you're a winner today, PM me, please. And um, if you could, tell me what you won. Although I wrote down your name, so I know what you won. And everybody, have a great week crafting and whatnot. And I will see you later. Take care. Bye.